This is Synology's proprietary PCI expansion card. It's called the E10 M20-TI, long name. It adds the 10 gig ethernet port as well as two NVMe SSD slots. And this is the piece of hardware that I will be installing today to add caching. All right, I'm in Final Cut Pro here and I just got done editing my very first video here on the Synology NAS. So I'm gonna do a little bit of performance testing because I did buy the card to uh, get some caching. I wanna see if that makes any difference. So the caching card is not installed right now. And I was able to uh, edit this with importing the video files, which are just HD, HDR files into the NAS. In editing them on this thing, I found no difference at all in editing them off of the NAS than I do if I import them directly to this machine here, which has the one terabyte SSD fast memory in it. So definitely don't need any caching to just edit a file, but I want to see if the caching makes a difference when actually doing the transcoding, which is the more intensive stuff. So. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, transcode this before I add the memory and then again after, see what the difference is. And so over here on the laptop, I have the resource monitor for the NAS up so we can uh, watch what's going on over there. And I'll also pull up the activity monitor on this as I do it. So to be fair, I just uh, transcoded this one time. So I'm gonna delete all of the generated media to make it fair. Make sure that there isn't anything already out there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and transcode media. As soon as I hit okay, I'm gonna start my stopwatch and we'll see how long it takes. All right, stopwatch started and I'm gonna watch this little icon up here until it gets the check mark and we will see how long it takes. So I'm gonna pull up our activity monitor and just keep an eye on our CPU load because the interesting thing to me is that uh, I hear the fan not yet But I will hear the fan on my Mac uh, turn on And it's got a super high CPU usage right now And over here we can see the network traffic has started and our on the volume our uh, reading and writing is happening And the fan is kicking in on the iMac. So I'm five minutes into transcoding and it's humming along using a lot of CPU. And over here you can see that the read speeds in the bottom left there in red are a lot slower than the write speeds. And our network in the top right is uh, going along. I have it just plugged into the one gig ports, so it's not using the uh, 10 gig bandwidth. Of course, I don't have access to the 10 gig bandwidth because uh, that card's not installed yet. Uh, even when it is, I don't think I'm going to be able to use it, but more on that later. Um, so I guess what it's doing right now is reading off of my NAS, sending it over the network to my Mac here, and my Mac is doing the transcoding of the data, and then it is shipping it back over to the NAS uh, and writing it to disk. So this is the process, and uh, we'll just let it keep going. And by the way, this video is almost 20 minutes long, 19 minutes, 41 seconds. All right, just finished. It took uh, just under 12 minutes to do that and uh, this page actually got refreshed uh, most of the way through so we don't get all the data there but it stayed pretty consistent from what you were seeing earlier. So now the big question is after installing cache does that help? All right, so this is after installing my new quieter fans. You can see that the temperatures on all the drives are still nice and low and normal. First thing I'm gonna do is just hold in this power button and it will uh, nicely power down the NAS. All right, now that that's off, I'm gonna get the NVMe drive out of here. 
So all the other little standoffs on the card are kind of welded on to add one. If you're using a shorter card like me, you actually have to use one of the included screws and an included standoff to screw that in. Then I can take my little card and attach it here, hit it at a slight angle, press it in like that, and then push it down, use another screw and screw it in here. So there it's attached, nice and snug. So this little thing labeled number two, I'm going to take uh, three of these out of here. And on the back of this heat sink, you can see it shows you where to place them. You need three of them right here, like that. And they will press against our uh, card. So go ahead and screw these four down. They're like little spring-loaded screws. It's pretty cool. And these screws have these little... Uh, kind of washer things on them that make it a hard stop so you can't screw it in too far or not enough. All right, remove a few screws to take this lid off again and uh, it's gonna go right here where this plate is. Looks like there's one screw holding this uh, plate on. So it's gonna take that off and it's gonna plug into here. All right, with that unscrewed, you just pull this off the back. It's kind of locking it into place that out and this big old card fits right in here slide it into our PCI slot and uh, put that thing back on screw it in once it is attached and installed this is what it's gonna look like and again RAM upgrade it's gonna go there eventually probably all right, now I'm gonna turn this guy back on and go upstairs and configure the cache. All right, I saw where to configure this once before. Let me see if I can remember how I got there. Let's see, I think it was main menu. I think it was under the storage manager. Click on storage and create SSD cache. And before, when I did this, it said that there was nothing available. Now, oh, interesting. Oh man, so I have to mount it to a specific volume? Yeah, I did not realize you had to pick a volume for it. Uh, I thought I could use it for all of them, but Volume three is my editing, so, uh, okay, I don't have two of them, so we're gonna do read-only cache. Uh, yeah, that's my only choice there, because I only have one SSD drive. And that is my cache device that we just installed. Yes, they want you to use a Synology product, shocker. Okay, so I guess you can just allocate part of it to this volume and then allocate as much as you want to each volume. All right, that makes more sense. Um, hmm. So I guess I'm going to allocate almost all of it to this volume because this is the volume that's going to get most of the work. Okay, apply. Yes, erase all of the data on that new drive. All right, cool. It's mounting the cache, so we'll wait till it's done. All right, so if I go to create again, it says no available SSD. So that's what it told me before I installed it. Interesting. So. I guess maybe I can't split this up between volumes. I don't know if you know how to do that. Let me know in the comments below, but I guess I'm just gonna remove this for now. And uh, then I'm gonna come back and add it with the full terabyte so I don't lose any storage. All right, now that we have our SSD cache up and running, I'm gonna go ahead and restart this process again and see uh, what kind of timing we have. Oh, and since I turned off the NAS, it uh, lost connection to this thing, so I have to reopen the library, and I've noticed that Final Cut, for some reason, you have to 
I have to uh, quit it and restart it for it to know about that drive again. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, so I have to go back in and do open library. I'm going to start this process again by deleting all of the generated media for this. So we have a fair comparison. And then I am going to transcode media and start the timer again. All right, so we just started doing that and our cache hit rate is already hitting some cache. So that seems promising. But let me go back to our resource monitor. We'll keep an eye on what's going over here. And we'll pull up the activity monitor, check out our CPU load here, and I'll just kind of uh, bounce back and forth and keep an eye on these things as it goes, and I'll report back when the timer's done. All right, it just finished, and this time it was just under 10 minutes, so it actually did go faster, so that's a good sign. Uh, that's what I would hope for. Definitely wouldn't want it to be slower, but I want to do one more test. Now that it's had a chance to go through all of the original video files that I need to transcode and should have them all in cache, I want to see if doing this one more time will be even faster uh, because as I'm editing them, they should all be getting into cache the first time. So uh, let's, let's see what happens. All right, transcoding for the third time now. I got a big bump in the read speed right at the very beginning there. Uh, another interesting thing is that my memory utilization is at 25%, which I think it was like 11% before the cache came along. So I guess maybe a lot of the memory is being used for caching. Not sure exactly. Uh, back over here, I noticed that I now have my PCIe interface a uh, little diagram there showing that I have one slot of that ready. If you hover over it, it tells you about the uh, card and the storage pool that it's associated with. Just wanted to take a look back here again and check out the hit rate. So I guess this isn't like a uh, lifetime hit rate. It's just while you're watching it. Here's the cache hit rate um, spread out over time. Well, so much for that theory. It just finished and it was just under 12 minutes again. So it was even uh, worse than the first run with the cache installed. So I think we have eliminated uh, reading being the bottleneck. So I don't know what you guys think is the bottleneck here still. Is it just the transcoding and all the math that my uh, CPU is doing or is there another way that I can improve this? Let me know.